Welcome back to the political segment of the weekend show. The topic of discussion is the death sentence law in Nigeria. No fewer than 53 spouses have been allegedly killed in Nigeria by their partners in two years. Mariam Sanda was recently sentenced to death by hanging. She was arraigned by the police on November 24, 2017 over the death of her husband, Bill Yaminu Bello. Delivering judgment in the case last week on Monday, uh, the trial judge, Justice Yusuf Halilu, held that the evidence of the convict that the deceased died after falling on a bottle of shisha was only a cover-up plot. Joining us in today's topic, today's segment to discuss this topic, we have... We have with us Rukhaya Ibrahim Yai. She is the founder of Ma Foundation for substance abuse and mental health awareness. Welcome back to the show, Rukaya. You've been you. here before, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I have been. <laughs> Thank you for having me back. You're yeah, most welcome, Rukaya. This debate has split social media in many parts. People are saying, no, uh, the death sentence was too harsh to be leveled against Mariam. And some other people are saying it is definitely justice deserved. Uh, I don't want to ask your personal opinion on <laughs> this, but I want to ask your personal opinion on the broader issue, the issue of death sentence. Do you believe in a same society, and in the 21st century, this is still appropriate uh, punishment to uh, you know, measure out to anybody irrespective of the crime they've committed? Um, I think I'm still very neutral with that because there are some crimes when you see it and you feel like, oh my God, they deserve the death sentence. And there are some you feel they, they deserve a second chance. Like Miriam's case is a very emotional tragedy already. And then she's a mom with two kids. And then when you go about it, you feel like, okay, maybe she has a chance. But then I'm speaking because I have these emotions attached to it because she's a mother and she's a woman. But then what about the family of the man that died, you know? And anger is bad. So haven't you thought about that before stabbing, not just once, twice, th you know, multiple times? So, um, but for me, I feel death sentence should be you know, even in the United States, it's state by state, some states still apply it, some states don't, and they all have their reasons. But for me, I think it depends on the crime, really. It depends because there are some people you feel like the kidnappers, you feel, oh my God, just kill them, you know? There are some people really that don't deserve second chances. There are some people you feel, oh, I think they deserve second chances. Some people are not sorry for the crime, they are just sorry because they, they are caught. caught, yes. Well, so generally, um, in law and sociology, they talk about sentencing patterns. Yeah. And two um, major factors which always come up is either rehabilitation or deterrence. Do you feel in this day and age where globally they are calling for an end to death sentences, do you feel that if we focus just on rehabilitation, there wouldn't be deterrence? Because countries like, um, I think, was it Norway where he killed children in a holiday camp. Yeah. There's no death sentence there. Mm -hmm. And so that person can get 21 years and come out. So if you aren't deterring people from doing that, you're focusing on rehabilitation, doesn't that encourage other people to carry out similar crimes? Um, yes and no. You know, I believe in rehabilitation works really. Um, even with um, um, terrorist group like Al Qaeda and Boko Haram, some of them you see them rehabilitated and reintegrated into the society and they get to preach against that. So it's a two way thing again, you know, with distance, there is no, it's very debatable. There are people, it's just about facts, and then human beings always change. They are so dynamic, like it's so they change constantly. So for me, I think it's whatever works for that country or state, or even if it's a local government law, I don't know, but whatever works for them. You but know, Amnesty International has yeah. actually been on at the forefront of this campaign yes. to end this death sentence. Uh, their claim is that no matter what the crime is, you know, uh, death sentence can be used against your political opponents. It can be used mm -hmm. against, you know, people that are not just, you just don't find favorable. So uh, they've been calling for the absolute abolition of the death sentence. Do you think um, we would see the day in Nigeria 
I mean, as Andy said, other Western and more developed countries are yet to come to, to agree with this. Do you think we'll see the day in Nigeria where we can make do without the death sentence law? Yes, it's possible. And I wish, um, I pray we witness it because there are more um, things you can help individual. Because at the end of the day, all you want is just to have a better society and lesser crimes. And if that aspect of rehabilitations and reintegration serves that, I think it's better we apply that than the death sentence. And but I like the fact that you also focus on mental health. Yes. I want you to also speak about the role of, you know, taking proper care of yourself in terms of, you know, your mental well-being um, and its association to the rehabilitation of these criminals. Do you believe if we do more, you know, mental health work, you know, most of these people wouldn't even be where, you know, they are today in terms of, you know, um, growing up like Miriam Sander yeah. and, you yeah. know. I think one of the simplest thing and very available things we have and we take for granted is communication. Um, with years of experience in mental health, I think communication can do a lot, a lot of things. Um, it can build, it can destroy, it can, you know, it can reveal. So, I mean, communication is so powerful and we take it for granted. So, I mean, um, even with Mariam Sender, there has to be a time where there are situations, maybe from her parents, they sit her down to talk to her and understand, okay, this is really dangerous and I think she should just walk out of the marriage or they should get separated for some time or for some years and let's see what happens. But we just don't communicate in this country. And I think we need to do more. We need to do more because even with mental health, 50% um, or 60% of mental health help comes from words, from communication, therapy, counseling, whatever you call it, is your words, your kind of words you use towards that person. It heals and it destroys. Hmm. So. Um, <laughs> interesting. I, I like the words you use because uh, it makes you reflect and say, okay, this does make some sense. However, the victim's family, and by victim now I mean the husband, the late husband, yeah. he is a brother, he's a father, he's a child, he's a cousin to certain people. And so his family is going through a lot of psychological mm -hmm. stress right now. Mm -hmm. um, the children would have um, issues which have to be resolved, otherwise they would carry it into um, the wider world. So in sentencing, do you feel there should be a place for mental rehabilitation of the victims and families of the victim? Because you could say, oh, you are rehabilitating the accused or the convict. But what happens to the families, the people who are affected by this loss? Yes, I think um, not just in Nigeria, but worldwide, we always forget the victims and their families and focus on the... Um, the crime and the criminal. Yes, the criminal, you know. And we just leave, like, the victims to just deal with themselves. But I am glad, like, our presence are turning into correctional centers, which is fabulous. And so there will be a lot of probation, um, community services for punishments, and that will really help in a lot of ways. But I think yeah, the like victim families, I think right now they have to go into their own kind of rehabilitation and medi meditation. In Nigeria, most of the time we, we meditate through religion, through prayers in religion, whatever works for them. But I don't think, I think we need to improve in creating more government um, facilities for therapy and counseling and we should focus on the victims and their families. Mm. And the judiciary should definitely look at ways to support that mental um, health that the victims' families uh, will seek after such a crime has been perpetrated against their loved ones. Because I think they just ju judge in silence yes. on the mm. perpetrator of the crime yes. yeah. and forget <coughs> the other side of them. Absolutely. Not just more that but even rape. Mm. and other cases, you know, because you see that we are just, even the activists, we're just passionate about getting the criminal to be sentenced. And after that, we're like, yes. And then we usually forget the victims mm. or not like we forget them with less import, not um, help because we think, okay, this is done. And then we have other issues to face. So I think that should really be a facility, whether government or 
um, private individuals should have that and to help their victims. That's a fine place to leave it. Yes. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. on the program and Thank sharing you yourself. So much for Don't having. forget to follow us on social media at Weekend Show NG on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You've already seen a presentation by Hunter Stone Band. Uh, we had to bring them back again. However, um, you know, we don't have any other performance for you. But until next week, please do take care of yourself and ensure you visit our website, www.weekendshowng.com. I'll see you next week. Woo.